judged by their intention And every man shall be judged accordingly And whatever you keep inside of your heart In alhamdulillah wa nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئة أعمالنا ومن يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد الرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters wherever you are around the globe at this present time I greet you with the greetings of the believers Assalam Peace Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi barakatuh. Peace be upon you and the mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost to bless this time that we'll be spending together and to accept it as an hour that is solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow it to be an hour in which we can grow together. An hour in which we can recharge our hearts from the trials and tribulations that have afflicted us from throughout the week. My dear brothers and sisters, when was the last time that you paused in your life and pondered on the greatness and the power of Al-Qawi Al-Jaleel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Qawi the All-Powerful, Al-Jaleel, the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When was the last time that you reflected on just how small and how weak you are in front of Al-Majid, Al-Azim, the Majestic, the, all, the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in the Quran, my brothers and sisters, وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانَ ضَعِيفًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that we have created the human being in weakness. The human being has been created in weakness. Weakness, my brothers and sisters. And in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ أَنْتُمْ الْفُقْرَاءِ لَلَّهِ وَاللَّهُ هُوَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, O oh mankind, you are the poor in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah is the rich and he needs no one and he is the all praiseworthy. My brothers and sisters, all of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in need of Allah. All of the creation is in need of the sustenance of a razaq in need of the sustenance of the sustainer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in these two verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing mankind alone, reminding him of his weakness. This is because, my brothers and sisters, it is mankind alone. Mankind along with the jinn that are the only part of creation that has had the audacity or the arrogance to reject the power and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mankind has been the only part of creation that has had the audacity or arrogance to, to try and make himself equal, equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by, by bringing his own laws into this world that go against the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And mankind and the jinn are the only creation 
the only creation that has had the, the audacity and the arrogance to try to try and fight against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to fight against the way, the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that the, the soldiers that are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are so many, so wide, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَلِلَّهِ جُنُودَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ SubhanAllah That for Allah, to Allah belongs the soldiers of the heavens and the earth. The soldiers of the heavens and the earth. The soldiers of the heavens, my brothers and sisters. The angels. The angels are enough. The power, the greatness of the angels. The poisonous gases that are in the universe. The, the moons, the suns, the asteroids, the comets. All of this, all of this, even the cold, is all the soldiers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on the earth, the soldiers on the earth, those who are defending, defending Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But not only that, the oceans, the oceans that rise and swallow nations, the waves that lift and destroy, the winds that howl at night, howling and destroying, even the sand, even the dust can be a weapon, is a soldier of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the earthquakes, all of these things are soldiers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Defending, waiting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give the order. And then they will go into battle for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But mankind continues, continues to remain negligent. Mankind continues to remain arrogant. Arrogant as if he is the creation that is the most powerful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human being as the most powerful creation, the best of his creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Fi ahsani taqweem in Surah at teen Fi ahsani taqweem in the best form. But this has caused mankind to become arrogant, to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day, one day a rabbi, a learned rabbi, came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we have found in our scriptures, that Allah will put the heavens on one finger. And he will put the earths on, one, on the tip of one finger. And he will put the oceans on one finger. And he will put the trees on one finger. And he will put the soil on one finger. And he will put the rest of the creation on one finger. And then he will say, Ana al-Malik. I am the king. Upon this, the Prophet ﷺ smiled. And so much that his molotif began to show. And this was in confirmation of what the, of what the Jewish man had said, of what the, the rabbi had said. And then the Prophet ﷺ recited the verse, وَمَا قَدْرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ وَالْأَرْضُ جَمِيعًا قَبَدَتُهُ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Allah subhanahu uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited the verse and they have not estimated the true power of Allah. And on the day of judgment, that the whole of the world will be in the grasp of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The grasp of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet my brothers and sisters, mankind still remains, still becomes arrogant, still forgets 
that there is a cre that there is a creator that created him that is more powerful than anything because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created mankind as the best creation fi ahsani taqweem but because of this mankind often forgets mankind often goes to the extreme and considers himself forgets Allah and considers himself to be powerful but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught the believers the the medicine the medicine for this arrogance how to defeat this arrogance that is in our hearts and that is to remember always that there is no might no power except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah one day Abu, Abu, Abu Musa al-Ashari the Sahaba related in a hadith that one day we were traveling with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and when we came to the areas that were lifted that were raised we all began to, to, to say loud Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar and they continued to do this but then the Prophet ﷺ said to them, Do not tire yourselves, for you are not calling someone who is deaf, deaf or someone who is absent, but you are calling the one who can see and hear everything and is near. And then the Prophet ﷺ came close to Abu, Abu Musa al-Ashari and he said, Ya Abdullah ibn Qais, and Abu, Abu Musa was saying in his heart, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no might, no power except for Allah. And the Prophet ﷺ came to him and he said, O oh, Abdullah bin Qais, say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Say, there is no might and no power except for Allah. For verily, it is a treasure of paradise. A treasure of paradise. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no might, no power except for Allah. This is the medicine. The medicine for mankind so that he does not consider himself to be so great. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. To constantly say this. Constantly remind himself. That there is no might or power except for Allah. This short, ver this short saying, La hawla, this word La hawla, we, we translate it in English as no might, but it means much more than that. La hawla means that there is no change from one condition to another except with the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no person who is committing sin who will become righteous except if he goes with the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he seeks help through the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no oppressed in the world that will, be, that will not no longer be oppressed unless he, unless he seeks help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the all-powerful. There is no person who is ill, who is suffering illness, who will become better, except through the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no might, no power except for Allah. And there is no prisoner, righteous prisoner, who is set free, except if he seeks the help with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this happened in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the companions by the name of Auf bin Malik al-Ashji'i. Auf bin Malik had a son who had now been captured by the polytheists, the mushrikeen. And we all know that the Bushrikeen, the, the polytheists in those days, that if you were caught by them, that they would torture you. They would punish you. They would kill you. 
Most likely you would die, you would never come back. So he had this thing in his heart for his son, that he wanted his son back. And now he had become poor, because now his son used to help him. So the Sahabi went to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and told told the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam of what has happened, and he said, "Ya Rasulullah, my son has been caught prisoner by the mushrikeen, by the polytheist, and now I have become poor, looking for some advice." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him, "Ittaq Allah, fasbir." وَكْثُرْ بِقَوْلْ لَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ The Prophet wasallam said to him, Fear Allah and be patient and be frequent in saying لَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ There is no might, no power except for Allah, except with Allah. Be frequent in saying this. So the Sahaba left and took the advice of the Prophet ﷺ until he began everywhere that he went, he began to repeat constantly, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no might, no power except with Allah. Going through the marketplace, he would say this. Going through the streets, going home, even in his own home, he would continue saying this over and over and over again. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And it had not even reached, not even reached a week when the Sahabi was sitting in his house and in came his son carrying a sheep on his shoulders. Subhanallah. The house was full of joy. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, the son has come back, our son has come back. And the son said that yes, the, the captors, the polytheists were negligent of him. And he managed to escape easily. And not only did he escape, but he managed to escape with some sheep as well. The Sahaba opened the door and looked outside and then... He saw that there was a large amount of sheep that had come with his son. Subhanallah, they were poor. And now his son had turned up with a great amount of sheep, even in some narrations, over 4,000 sheep that he had. The Sahaba went to the Prophet ﷺ. He said to his son, we have to go and ask the Prophet ﷺ, fearing. We have to ask the Prophet ﷺ if it is halal to eat this. So the Sahaba went to the Prophet ﷺ and asked him, Is it halal to eat this food? The Prophet ﷺ said, Yes. And then the verse of the Quran was revealed. وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَ وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ The verse of the Quran was revealed that whoever fears Allah that Allah will make for him an exit. And he will, he will provide for him from places that he never expected. Places that he never imagined. Who would have thought that his son was in such a condition, facing death and now he has arrived. But not only arrived, but arrived with an amount of sheep that would last him for a lifetime. Brothers and sisters, as long as we continue to say these words, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, we can only expect good in this life and the next. It is a treasure of the paradise, a treasure of paradise, a treasure that is under the arsh of Ar Rahman. Inshallah ta'ala, my brothers and sisters, we will go to a short break and return just after this short break. Change 
نتخذ من دون الله أندادا يحبونهم كحب الله والذين آمنوا أشد حبا لله ولو يرى الذين ظلموا إذ يرون العذاب أن القوة لله جميعا وأن الله شديد العذاب Islam is a comprehensive way of life. It deals with everything. The Prophet ﷺ wanted to empower people. And he wanted them to feel the responsibility. Not just to rely on the state. The companions عنهم, and in particular Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali. In the beginning they were not pleased and they were not proud to become the Khalifa. These days we see the candidates running to become the Amis. Islamic State has to provide all inhabitants with the basic needs. It has to fulfill their basic needs. Two of the main foundations of the Islamic State is to establish justice. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, uh, wherever you are around the world, welcome back to Living Hearts. A program that, inshallah ta'ala, we pray, really. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows this time to be a time in which we can grow together. A time in which we can recharge our hearts from the trials and tribulations that have afflicted us from throughout the week. Brothers and sisters, what can we say? This word, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. This phrase, that there is no might nor power except with Allah. How negligent some of us are in saying it. Or maybe we didn't know. But it is a treasure. A treasure of paradise. And also a treasure of this world. When we say these, these remembrance, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like this, that we can achieve anything in this world. Sometimes we're in a situation and that situation looks like it's impossible to get out. There's no, there's no way you're going to get out of this one. This now, this is it. You're finished. This is the end. But yet, somehow, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes for you an exit. Makes for you an, a way out. And this is something that is a treasure for the believer in this world and in the next. As for the disbeliever, when times become too tough for him, usually they fall apart and start taking medicine or drugs or, or kill themselves worse. But as for the believer, he knows that as long as he fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and constantly remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always make an exit for every problem no matter how big it is no matter how much it is we should never underestimate the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of the stories that has affected my heart is the story of our dear brother and we're not talking about sahaba here no we're talking about this day and age the days that we're living in we're talking about a 23 year old man by the name of Rizal Shatpuri. Rizal Shatpuri. Where from? From Indonesia. The province of Aceh. Rizal Shatpuri was, a, man, was a, a young brother. He still is a young brother, alhamdulillah. And he used to be frequent in the masjid. He used to frequent the mosque. So much that he even used to sweep the mosque before and after the prayers out of respect for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Rizal Shadpuri, a young man, 23 years of age, 
living in the province of Achai. One day, when he was, after the prayer, he was cleaning the mosque and he heard the people start to scream. The people were screaming and yelling and in panic. There was mayhem. What is it? Is it the day, the day of judgment? What is it? And the people began to yell and scream that there's a great wave coming. There's a great wall of water that is coming to swallow us all up and take us. It was the tsunami. In the year 2004, 25 December, the, the great tsunami that we all heard about. Rizal did not have enough time to escape. He began to run, but it was too late. The great wall of water swallowed him and picked him up. And not only did it push him inland, then pulled him back out. Out, 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 far into the ocean. In fact, 100 miles out into the ocean, away from his beloved province of Achai. Now Rizal was stuck only on a, on a palm tree that had, leave, that had branches sticking up that had been crushed and destroyed in the great wave. Rizal then, he said that he had no, nothing to do, no, no, way of, no way of survival, except that he found a pot, a silver pot, and he placed it on his thing, and from the, from the mercy of Allah, it began to rain. And Rizal said that at that time, before that time, that he continued reciting verses from the Qur'an and saying different adhkar, like la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, and other adhkar, and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're talking about a man now who's a hundred miles from the sea, from the shore. Maybe he cannot even see it. And he found the pot from the, sake, from the, from the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he placed the pot, and from the mercy it rained. And he had enough rain water to drink. And then he searched more, and he found the doorknob. And then he found a coconut, many coconuts. So he gathered the coconuts and placed them on his raft that was only a tree. And he took the doorknob, had nothing else, and he began to smash the coconuts and eat the coconuts. For nine days, my brothers and sisters, Rizal was in the middle of the ocean. At first, he had some companions with him. But after this, Many of them, all of them, died off one by one, weaker, becoming weaker and weaker. Some of them in the water, maybe eaten by sharks, others drowning, unable to continue. But Rizal continued to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while he was on his raft. Nine days, a hundred, a hundred miles away from his beloved province of Achai, until eventually a great ship passed by. A ship that was heading towards Japan. And Rizal said that he stood up and began to jump and wave. Help! 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 He was waving to the great ship. And the, the owner of the ship said that he, at first he was looking out with his binoculars and he saw something, some something there that was moving and he said at first, at first I just thought it was a branch and I was going to leave it but then when I when I focused in I saw that it was a man and he was waving and shaking his hands subhanallah so he came over and sent a boat and they took Rizal and took him onto the ship and then took him to Malaysia and from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's still with us today He's still with us today in this world. And Rizal, he said that, or Rizal, he said that, I am so happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved me. I am so thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, we should always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whenever a situation is hard for us, that if we remember Allah, we will always make an exit for it. 
The power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is undoubtedly beyond our imagination. That the army of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to defend us, to defend the believer, but at the same time, sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we become negligent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down for us a disaster or possibly a punishment for some. Others it is a remembering. To remember, to remind us of the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should never underestimate the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Qawi, Al-Jaleel. We should never underestimate the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With just one day of rain, one whole day, cities can be destroyed. One week, Pakistan, Australia, America, just a few days, 24 hours of rain and wind, and the damage can be too much. Too much for us, just how weak we are in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This what you are seeing is just a portion of the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just a portion. Just a portion. We saw the floods that happened in Pakistan. But we saw the tsunamis. This is the tsunami that happened in Japan that killed so many people. So many people died. Homes destroyed everything. A sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remind us that the, all of the power that all of the power is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Rabb, have mercy on us. Ya Rabb, help us to remind, to remember your power, Ya Rabb. Take a look at it, my brothers and sisters. Just a small portion of the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you imagine on the day of judgment? And we're not only talking here about, on this, we're not talking about uh, the poorer countries as people call them, third world countries, and oh, they weren't prepared. We're talking about countries like Australia, countries like America, who have prepared for years to try and defend themselves from these, what they call natural disasters. But yet in the end, we all have to admit that there is no might or power except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The power is with Allah. The power is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Where are we? What can we do? What can we do in this life when the power is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Look at these people standing on the beach watching the great tsunami coming. There's no escape. There's no escape from something like this. All you can do is place your trust in Allah and pray to Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes an exit for you. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Look at the power. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. What a reminder to us all. What a reminder to remind us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala carries all the power. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a hadith the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that from the power of Allah that if all of, if the first of you and the last of you and the human of you and the jinn of you were all to stand together and to ask for something in prayer from me and I was to give it all to you that I would not lose anything from my power except what the ocean would lose 
if you were to place a needle in that ocean. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Volcanoes, earthquakes, tsunamis, fires, hurricanes, cyclones, you name it, my brothers and sisters. It is all here on this earth. But there is none of it in paradise. Paradise is the place that we are seeking. This world is just a test. Just a test to see who, who of you will do the best deeds in this world. Those who have passed will succeed. Those who have done the righteous works in this world will succeed. But those who have forgotten Allah, those who have neglected or rejected the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look what is coming. We are all going to die. Some of us will die in catastrophes like this. And others will die on their bed, an old man. And others will die in the first seconds of their life. But all of us, all of us are returning to, to Al-Qawi, the All-Powerful. All of us are returning to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, inshallah ta'ala, uh, now we will open up the telephone lines and we'll give you a chance to call in inshallah ta'ala and please do because this is your time to call in and have your say. Maybe you have something to remind us, something to tell us, uh, something that can help us. Maybe you have a question, you don't understand why. Why are these things happening? Call to us and ask us and if you have some advice, give us advice. The telephone number that you can see is on the screen there. I'll say it to you. It is 002 02 38555 248 249. 002 02 38555 248 or 249. And we ask, Maybe you have something you can tell us. Maybe you have a story that helped you that when you, when you placed your trust in Allah. Uh, we have a telephone call already. We have Sister Huda from Egypt. Sister Huda, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Yes, I want to, 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 to tell you something that I, 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 I see. Some, some people, Muslim, when they have problems, they, they will send me to ask Allah to help them. But when, when Allah help them and everything be good, they forget Allah, forget to suddenly. When I see this, I, I, I feel sad and I feel upset. Jake, I, I, I want to tell you that my life now, when I be Muslim, I want to say only that, alhamdulillah, too much for, Allah, for everything. Alhamdulillah, too much for everything. I want you to uh, only, for not about, not non-Muslim only but for Muslims also, to ask Allah to guide them in the right way of Allah, because I see some people, they're Muslim really, but they, they forget Allah. They, they, they don't remind, like the boy, Indonesia, you, you just say now that he, he remember Allah, he asked Allah too much to keep him alive again. Chocolate and I want everything to be good for Muslim and non-Muslim to be to Muslim also. Shukran. Jazak, Jazak, Huda, Barakallah fiki. Some very uh, important uh, information there, and uh, uh, we have another telephone call coming through. Fatima from KSA. Fatima, salam alaikum, Sister Fatima. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, I have a small question to ask you. Yes, Sister, go ahead. Uh, some, I love obeying Allah and I love obeying His Messenger, but sometimes I have a rebellion, rebel, rebellionist in my heart. Okay. And I want to know how to defeat this. Okay, sister. Anything Jazakallah. else there, sister? No, Jazakallah. Jazakallah khair, Sister Fatima. First of all, uh, Sister Huda Barakallah Fiki, uh, for your uh, comments and it is true, many of us 
and this is this is the, the, the human being that is negligent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when something when some catastrophe happens to him he realizes oh no I'm so weak I have to return to Allah but then when the catastrophe catastrophe is finished he returns to the same old selfish self that he was the same old arrogant self but the punishment for this person is worse when he goes to the grave because he has already seen he has already recognized but he has forgot and jazakallah khair for these uh, for this comment sister fatima sister fatima is saying that uh, alhamdulillah she has a uh, many times she's obeying allah obeying allah subhanahu wa ta'ala following the deen alhamdulillah uh, but sometimes she has a rebellion uh, a rebellious uh, streak you could say something rebellious inside her that she wants to rebel or this is the shaitan my sister this is the shaitan that is calling you to rebel and it's not only you it's all of us you think it doesn't happen to us it happens to everybody sister that the shaitan will try to call you to rebel to become rebellious come on come and do something this is the shaitan whispering now the way to defeat that sister the way to defeat that is for you to look at how the shaitan attacks you does he attack you through anger does he attack you through leisure when you're relaxing does he attack you when you're doing this and then to try and try and stop for example anger when you see yourself getting angry angry go and make wudu go and lie down go and read quran think that this is the way that shaitan is going to get to me and try to try to fight shaitan through your nafs we have another telephone call we'll answer that telephone call inshallah we have brother yusuf from pakistan brother yusuf salam alaikum wa alaikum as -salam. how are you brother uh, i'm fine how are you ya sheikh alhamdulillah i'm fine brother alhamdulillah ala kulli. i would like to have uh, i would like to give a small comment that regarding the topic that there is no might but allah and that uh, if uh, we Muslims do not behave, sometimes do not behave well, Allah Ta'ala uh, puts upon us the punishment. So, but I would like to have the other aspect, uh, just a comment, that uh, it reminded me of a waqtia that I uh, heard from my uh, uh, scholar Sheikh that once uh, there was a, some, there was a uh, there was a famine and during the time of uh, Prophet Musa, Moses, uh, peace be upon him, and uh, he asked Allah, to, oh, uh, oh Allah, please give us, uh, please have mercy on us and give us rain. Allah said that I cannot give you a rain, I cannot have rain upon you until there's there's a person in your in your amongst your people who is rebellious against me for the last forty years, and unless he repents and he's not out of this crowd, I cannot. Uh, I cannot even accept your uh, dua. So he to he told the people, and uh, and after a while, it it still started rain. And uh, Musa he uh, uh, he asked Allah that how how did this happen? You said that there's nobody who came out of the crowd, and uh, how did it rain? So Allah said that uh, that person uh, he repented in his heart, and I just forgave him, and this. It is because of him that I have brought to you rain. So my point was that on one side, if Allah punishes us, if we do not listen to him, but on the other side, he listens to our plea and our toba so fast that he's so merciful. So this was just a short uh, uh, walk here that I wanted to share with you. Jazakallah khair, Brother Yusuf. Jazakallah khair. Uh, Brother Yusuf, Jazakallah khair, really, yeah. Subhanallah, this is so true. And look at today. I mean, you know, often we're in the masjid. Yani we have a whole on Yom al Jummah. The whole of the Jummah is making dua. The Imam is always saying, Allahumma unsal al Muslimin al Islam wal Muslimin. Allah, yani the, the Imam is always saying, Ya yeah, Allah, give victory to, the, to Islam and to the believers. And yet, Sometimes we see that things are not moving as fast as what we would like to.
But then we should look at ourselves and think, well, do we deserve that victory now? Do we deserve it? Have we in ourselves done what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to do to, ad to achieve that victory? And this is what our brother Yusuf is saying. Barakallah feek, brother Yusuf. We have another telephone call here. We have... Omar Abdurrahman from Palestine. Assalamu alaikum, As sister. Assalamu alaikum, Omar Abdurrahman. I wanted to thank you all for this program. I'm learning a lot from it, mashallah. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. I have a question about a previous uh, program. Yes. The Sheikh was speaking about uh, jealousy for the sake of Allah. Yes. And yes. I missed, uh, where can I have the um, repeat of this program? Where can I find it? Okay. Uh, I don't know if that program's on the on the YouTube yet, but... Those programs that we have done in the past, uh, one, of, one brother who's, who's got a place called Teach Peace, uh, he's the one who puts them on. He, he must tape them and then puts them on the net. He's an anonymous brother and uh, he does that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If, 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 if you type in, sister, if you type into YouTube, uh, Living Hearts and then Zainadeen, uh, these these different uh, the past episodes that we had will come up on the screen uh, and you'll be able to watch them through YouTube. Uh, they're available. Inshallah, through YouTube. I also wanted to know what's the what's the topic of that program so I could find it. So, sorry, sister, say that again. What's the topic of the program that the Sheikh was speaking about? The jealousy for the sake of Allah. Uh, okay, I believe it was. Uh, I think it was uh, zeal for the sake of Allah. Zeal okay, for the sake of Allah. Yeah. Jazakallah khair. khair, sister from Palestine. Inshallah, may Allah keep you safe and uh, keep you away from any harm there in that land that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put barakah fi, uh, barakah kathir. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, take it from the hands, take it away from the hands of the occupiers and and push them away from us. Let's go to the Facebook, my brothers and sisters. We have, we had a question this week, and alhamdulillah, we had a good response from many of the brothers and sisters. Uh, we had, uh, and first of all, before I say that, brothers and sisters, if you haven't joined the Facebook, get on there and join up with the Facebook, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, we, we, we send out reminders, and we, we send out these things, so we can work together questions so we can work together so if you haven't got on the Facebook get on the Facebook uh, it, the, the, the Facebook page uh, will be on the screen shortly inshallah ta'ala on the Facebook we had the question what are some of the things that we can do to ponder on the power and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala share us your thoughts okay we had Halima Abdullahi and Halima Abdullahi is uh, quite constant in, uh, in, in answering, she has said, Salam. Uh, where is she? Okay, she has said, Salam. We can ponder on the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by reflecting on our different tongues and our different cultures and our languages and our different colors and sizes. Subhanallah. How true the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to create a creation that is so different like that. The next we have Suleiman Jibril Zaria and he has said take time to think about yourself and how Allah made you a believer and think deeply over the creation around you, the creations that surround you. Amen. Then we have Comrade Nasr Saba who said imagine what Allah has created the heavens and the earth both without anything put to support them and they still stand firm. Subhanallah. Uh, and he's from Nigeria, brother. Uh, we have Philly Jameh. And Philly has said, uh, in order for one to ponder on the power and might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one should reflect over the creations of Allah and know that no one can do that but Allah. No one can create except for Allah. Just take a slight headache or a toothache, for instance. You never know how it feels until Allah places it upon you. Therefore, one is, is, in, is realized in his one statement, the power and the might of Allah. So she's already picked it up. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah can simply be realized in his creations. 
uh, Ahmed Ghidim, who is, who is often sending in, uh, we have it deep inside our heart that Almighty Allah indeed have power and might, so we fear Allah and thank Him all that He did for us. Uh, he gave us health, water, drink, food, etc. How can we repay Him? Or we can't repay Him. Next we have Ahmed uh, Danjuma. We should always fear Allah and we, are also, we should also thank Him in any situation. S uh, Sumaya or Samia. Uh, one can ponder on how Allah creates a tree out of a small seed. SubhanAllah. Look at the size of a tree and where did it come from? It came from a small seed. Look at the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we have Hafsa Shihu uh, and Zebun Poli and Halima and Mary All and sorry we don't seem to have time to finish those uh, comments but inshallah ta'ala go to the Facebook brothers and sisters and check out those comments inshallah ta'ala it's a little reminder for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect the believers wherever they are in the world and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rabb, Ya Qawi, Ya Jalil, Ya Qawi, Ya the All-Powerful, Ya the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask you to, to protect us from your might, to protect us from your anger, to protect us and to make us of those who are returning to you, to returning to you in repentance, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we recognize your power. Ya Allah, we recognize your greatness. We praise you, Ya Allah. We ask you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to guide us, to give us the strength to leave the sins that we have. La hawla wa la quwwata illa bik. La hawla wa la quwwata illa bik, Ya Rabb. There is no might, no power except with you, Ya Allah. We ask you to, to, to help us to leave these sins, Ya Allah. These sins that are dragging us down. We, we ask you, Ya Allah, to help us to remain firm on the path so that we do not we do not rebel when the shaitan is calling us to rebel ya allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask you we ask you with your asma al husna well with your asma al husna ya rab we ask you with your beautiful names and attributes to protect us and to be our protector in this world and to destroy those destroy those who are trying to destroy islam ya rab either guide them or destroy them Ya Rabbil Alameen, and help us, help us as believers to remain firm in your path and to raise the flag of Islam around the world, wherever it may be. Brothers and sisters, before we go, the task for this week, you've probably guessed it. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. If you haven't memorized it, it'll be on the Facebook. This is our task for the week. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And to say this constantly, constantly, frequently this week, saying La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And that is enough we have time for today, inshallah ta'ala, my dear brothers and sisters, until next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today could be your last day Bear each other no malice Greed and faith can coexist In the same heart Heart Only you can change your heart We call upon you to do so